So, longtime fans of the channel will know that I own both an Intel shirt and then also, of course, an AMD shirt. Now, I didn't buy either of these shirts. They came with products that I purchased for free. And, well, I guess you would just say I bought a lot of Intel and AMD products over the last decade. Anyways, the reason I show these shirts is because, well, I mean, honestly, like over a year ago, I thought it would be fun once I had both to wear Intel in an Intel-focused video and wear AMD in an AMD-focused video. But there's this problem that started building more and more over time. People just started calling me an AMD fanboy for wearing an AMD shirt in a video about AMD. Uh, despite, you know, trying to wear green sometimes during NVIDIA and wearing this Intel shirt that I got because of how many Intel products I own. I mean, indeed, as we got farther and farther along since 2018, leaks about AMD products have been, <laughs> to some people, I guess, outrageously positive. It's been getting harder and harder to report on Intel positively. Um, well, one of the early things I said that got me called in AMD fanboy so many times was that Zen 3 would be when reality catches up with Intel. That, yes, Zen 2 would be comparable to Sandy Bridge, but people weren't really going to understand how big of a deal this was until one more generation where AMD crushes them in Gen over Gen games. And so, yeah. Well, Zen 3 reviews are officially out. Was I an AMD fanboy for hyping Zen 3? Well, not according to the reviews I read. No, at the end of the day, AMD has just utterly destroyed Intel. And honestly, when it comes to summarizing the reviews that are out there, I don't have that much to say overall, except that Intel's one sole advantage, low resolution, high refresh rate gaming, is now eliminated while AMD uses laughably less energy. Although I will say there are a few things that stick out to me I do want to highlight. Like for example, again, you know, any CPU at an i7 level or higher, maybe 5600X level or higher is absurdly good at gaming and more limited by the game engines, I would argue even, than the graphics cards themselves. Although I did notice a pattern in the hardware and boxed review. Look at this win here and this win here and then this win here. Noticing a pattern? These are all games launched at the end of 2019 or in 2020. In other words, while AMD seems to trade blows with the 10900K in most rosters, if we were to use the latest games, AMD's pulling ahead by a lot. Really, only Watch Dogs Legion is the outlier, and it's basically a tie. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope no one bought an i9 for longevity or price performance, or, well, to be honest, I don't really think anyone should have been buying Intel desktop chips for the past two years, so this shouldn't have surprised anybody if they understand AMD was releasing Zen 3, and that would be a much bigger deal over Zen 2. It is not a plus. It was Zen 3. But all right, so AMD's the best. Is there anything else I need to address? Well, number one, again, I would just highlight, my advice to most people is... You're building a new system and you want a top of the line gaming CPU, it's got to be Zen 3, baby. But if you're really concerned about price performance, I mean, again, look for good deals on previous gen Zens. I mean, any recent Zen Plus or later processor should be able to do above 100 hertz gaming in most games. You know, it is the best for people building new, but not everyone needs to upgrade. And well, let's address the price then. The 5950X I don't really think is worth talking about. It is the flagship consumer processor, you know, the cheapest thing you can get that doesn't require a godlike motherboard for Threadripper. So I think $800, no one's going to argue it's the best at everything. That's why it's $800. But there is a type of fanboy I want to address. It's not Intel fanboys, and it's, it's not really specifically just AMD fanboys either. This is a specific subsect of the AMD, shall we say, worshipping cult. This is what I call 
the AMD masochists. These are AMD fanboys that are only happy about AMD when AMD is an underdog. The second AMD starts winning, well, AMD better keep giving away processors for free or they're evil. I bring the AMD masochist fanboys up because they're really the most annoying fanboys to deal with in the comments sections. You know, they're not happy if you talk about Intel, they're not happy if you talk about Nvidia, and if AMD wins by too much, they're also mad at you. You know, they don't understand why the 5600X would be able to cost $300 and AMD's not some kind of Scrooge McDuck, or why the 5800X is 450. I pleaded, I tried to explain when Zen 3 was revealed that, well, the reason the prices are up a bit is because they're still gonna offer far better price performance than Intel at everything, well, also costing less than what they're competing with. And they said, there's no way that's true. Well, how did the 5600X and the 5800X do? Oh, look at that. The 5600X basically matches or even often beats the 10900K, a $500 at best processor for almost half the price while using less energy. Now that's just gaming. What about the 5800X? Sorry to tell you guys, but even in multi-threaded, it trades blows with the higher core count 10900K despite using less energy and again, costing less. That's why AMD raised prices by $50 relative to Zen 2 because they're giving you a better gaming product than Intel on a better platform that uses less energy and it's still a lower price despite being higher performance. And yeah, basically that's all I have to say about Zen 3. Its price is justified and it is pretty much the only option. Does that mean I'm gonna put this shirt on now and say I was right? I think I've already gloated enough and frankly, no, it's not fun anymore to put on the AMD shirt. Not because of how hard they're winning, but because I know this could be a victory for a long time. And I do want to now get into an overview of updated Intel information to give you guys an idea of, well, how bad it's going to be for a couple years. But first, an ad from a sponsor. Today, I would like to proudly mention that Skillshare is a sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like me, and maybe even my dog. She's pretty smart. Good girl. Sign up for Skillshare to obtain a membership with meaning that allows you to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are thousands of classes to choose from to enhance your creative skills. Subjects include e-commerce courses, graphic design, and even underrated skills like brewing great coffee with Michael Phillips. I find that one probably the most useful to me with how much I've been drinking lately. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and there are always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, and the first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Sign up for Skillshare today, a wonderful online community for following your passions and creativity. All right, so what will it take for me to wear this Intel shirt with pride again? Well, before I get into the information, just a couple things to say first. You know, as usual, number one, make sure you make note of what I'm saying in addition to what's shown. I will give context. Don't share these things out of context. And remember that the blue text is stuff I'm, I'd say, 90% or higher sure of, and the white text is rarely speculation, usually stuff above, you know, like, say, 60 75% sure, but not quite as I'm 100% as the other ones, you know. Um, and also, most importantly, this is not going to go through absolutely everything. I highly recommend you watch my Cypress Cove leak and my Sapphire Rapids and Alder Lake leak from earlier this year. This is kind of adding on top of that, although I think you'll be able to probably catch the gist of it without watching the longer videos. All right, let's get into it. Here's my new updates to what Intel's bringing over the next couple years. And do remember that this is Intel we're talking about. They're kind of just in the doghouse for me, not because I'm biased, but because they've missed so many of their marks 
over the past few years that they need to execute properly, similar to AMD, for two years before I trust everything is going to come out on time. But nonetheless, let's get to it. Anyways, of course, Rocket Lake comes first, and Intel has publicly confirmed double-digit IPC increases similar to what I confirmed at the beginning of this year. The closest I can get to an exact number is that it is 10 to 15%, with 15% being definitely the best case scenario, and the general consensus of it being around 11%. This is not, honestly, even an Ice Lake IPC increase over Skylake. Uh, and the single thread performance could slightly exceed single thread Zen 3, but that doesn't necessarily mean it will win in gaming or have higher per core performance. Remember, having one core, one single core beat the competition in single threaded apps does not mean if you boost multiple cores, it will be able to boost all of them as high on average as Zen 3. And we've seen you can overclock Zen 3's all core to about 4.7 gigahertz. So in other words, don't assume 100% that Intel's going to beat the 5800X in gaming performance with their top rocket lake which is also eight cores i mean it could but i think you can only say it'll probably edge it out in apps that just use literally one thread and yes of course we know it as pcie 4.0 but i'm told that at least the board makers think of it as basically a b550 level motherboard in terms of io and so with all this in mind you know i think the top eight core rocket lake could use as much energy as the top 10 core comet lake if not more and yet it doesn't have more cores, but it's better in single threaded. Yeah, I got to say the platform's kind of worse than AMD. The efficiency is worse and I don't expect the performance to really be better. So the only way I see Cypress Cove being interesting to gamers is if Intel calls honestly the top chip, not an i9 because now they're going back to eight cores, but call it like an i7-11700K and just charge a fair price for it below the 5800X. I can see myself recommending this to some people. But anyways, Intel is not <laughs> getting ready to hype this up that much. Expect a low-key release in March 2021. And then, of course, Ice Lake Server. That's coming out after Rocket Lake. And no HEDT lineup, though. This is just Cascade Lake X for the HEDT market through 2021. That means even after Zen 3 Threadripper is out, whatever Intel has now, which is basically what they've had for the past few years, isn't changing like at all, guys. Now, they have 38 to 40 core models supposedly planned. I only say supposedly because they haven't announced them yet, and I find that a little weird, but those are just for key contracts they have. These are not coming to gamers and you have to remember that Rome was engineered to defeat Ice Lake Server, right? AMD thought 10 nanometer would be out way before it actually came out. They thought they would be releasing this possibly after Ice Lake Server in 2019, and that's just not what happened. So Ice Lake Server was <laughs> should have lost to Rome years ago. It's not going to beat Milan. And it is yielding better than Ice Lake U. Look, 10 nanometer is a real node, but this isn't the new, you know, as they call it, Super FinFET. It is not yielding as well as Tiger Lake. And so they are going to try to replace this with Sapphire Rapids as soon as possible. And that brings us to Sapphire Rapids. So Sapphire Rapids will make things better in terms of gen over gen increase. This thing sounds like a real massive performance increase when you consider Golden Cove's IPC, which I'll get to on the next slide. Um, and as Adored has covered recently, and I've been covering for a year, you know, eight channel memory of DDR5, 80 lanes of PCIe 5.0, which is what Adored confirmed. Um, I know they tested core counts up to 72, but I, I can back up what Adored said. 56 is the top core count going on sale and it is made of multiple dies i know that it at least disabled down from 60 would not surprise me if they're actually disabling it down from 18 core dies down to 14 and just putting four of those um and also i just want to say that i can't find anyone to say that there's an io die it seems like it might be organized similar to naples with integrated io in each core chiplet that communicate with each other although again i'm not sure that's in white because no one's 100 percent sure how they're doing this they just know there's four chiplets with cores on them and it goes up to 56 and there are models with hbm2e as i also confirmed back in june but I have been told since then, do not expect some lineup with all HBM2E, you know, on package. This will be for specific products, most likely. 
And there is disagreement about when this launches. Look, Intel wants this out now, but my understanding is that it's probably going to be a paper launch at best at the end of 2021, and I wouldn't bet on that. You know, it, it will be out in 2022, and I do believe they will have high volume by the end of the year. It could be sooner. It's just there's disagreement amongst my sources. And, of course, it will use more energy than Epic Milan based on what we know. So when you look at this, this to me looks like something that because of the high IPC, which I'll get to in a second, because the core counts are almost as high as Zen 3 and it has some other special features, I could see this beating Milan in some uses, but I don't really see it. It probably won't beat it in everything, and it's probably going to launch right after Zen 4 or at best right before Zen 4. So this gets us to the next products. These are a little later, except for Alder Lake, but these are also the ones that I think are actually interesting. So this is kind of the interesting products from Intel slide. Intel Alder Lake with Golden Cove. IPC estimates I've stated for over a year now remain 10 to 20% over Tiger Lake, which would bring it to 35 to 50% over Sky Lake. If they can get this out before Zen 4, I think this could be a killer gaming architecture. And... I believe it's monolithic. Look, I speculated that this sounded like it could be 3D stashed because I saw Lakefield and there were some sources saying it probably was because it uses Big Little, but it sounds almost entirely confirmed to be monolithic at this point. I'll, I'll tell you guys if I hear anything else, but that's what it's sounding like. Another monolithic generation despite the interesting architecture. And uh, yeah, it's interesting because not only should it have higher clock speeds than Tiger Lake, but it should also, and the same graphics, but it should also have big cores and little cores. The top die should be eight cores, 16 threads, plus eight cores of Grace Mont, which again, I've confirmed this months ago. Um, and the configurations I'm hearing is there's eight plus eight, eight plus four, and six plus four. Now, I put that in white because who knows how Intel will disable these, but the way I see it is that right there, this is probably the i9, this is probably the i7, and this is probably the i5, but I'm not 100%, of course. And there is also a 6 plus 0, so just big cores, 6 cores, 12 threads, that I suspect will be the $100 and below market i3s and Pentium. So, yep, 12 threads with this type of IPC is coming in about a little over a year from now to gamers, uh, whether it's from AMD or Intel, it sounds like. And... I've been told that Golden Cove, there will be an iteration of it that replaces Lakefield. But that's it. I've only heard that. I have no details. So let's just leave that in white text. And this is when some info that's new from me gets interesting. I've heard that Intel's marketing is considering advertising the top i9 as 8 cores and 24 threads. There are a lot of people that said Intel was going to be dishonest by calling it a 16 core. And they still might. Who knows if marketing has a change of heart. But from what I've been told recently, they are considering just counting the Gracemont cores as added threads. Right? So they also, I have a source who mentioned hybrid. And it was a little ambiguous what the entire term was. But I believe what Intel could be considering doing is being eight cores, 24 threads, and they might put a check mark on the box, hybrid threading enabled. And then of course, if you have the i3 with no ability to do hybrid threading, they might just say hyper threading enabled. And then Pentium, six cores, no hyper threading. Well, maybe, who knows? You would just say no hybrid threading and no hyper, hyper threading. Eh, sorry. Anyways, though, this will go on the LGA 1700 platform, no matter how they decide to market it, and it should last for multiple generations. Now, I did hear from a source that's never been wrong that Meteor Lake should work on it, and he did mention Lunar Lake, but I put this in white just because I think when you have products this far out, assuming Lunar Lake's even for sure coming out or what platform it will be on, you shouldn't, I don't think you should hype that up. But I do know multiple years on LGA 1700, and... This is also somewhat new. I had hinted many times that Halder Lake was being considered to have both DDR4 and DDR5 support. I'm told it will have it, and I'm also told that it will support it on desktops as well, and that motherboard makers are being briefed to have motherboards with DDR4 support if they so choose. It sounds like most of the high-end motherboards will be selected to have DDR5, and then, of course, some low-end boards will have DDR4. Um, now, the, some bad news. Alder Lake does have PCIe 5.0, as I've been saying, for a year, contrary to other leakers. But I'm told that NVMe support could be limited to PCIe 4.0 on this first generation, and that later generations, of course, 
might have issues on motherboards that have DIMMs for DDR4. So it kind of sounds like mixed compatibility, kind of like how, what was it called? You know, like the A and B motherboards from AMD may not support Zen 3. And uh, anyways, I've also heard that there could be new mounting mechanisms required for the coolers due to a change in package height. And finally, Meteor Lake, and this is a exclusive for me as far as I'm aware. I've been holding on to this code name for a while, Redwood Cove. Um, and one thing I want to say qu quickly here, the reason it's not white nor the same blue color is I do hesitate to double down when you have a product this far out. It's meant for 7 nanometer EUV, preferably Intel's, unless they need to use a different source for manufacturing this. When you have something that's three years away, especially when it's Intel, you never know if they're going to cancel something. On that note, Ocean Cove was scrapped a while ago. I, again, I've known about Redwood Cove from the same sources I've been feeding you information from since the beginning of this year, but since it's so far away, I had no reason to say it. And frankly, if I would have said it right away, you never want to give away your sources. So these are good sources, and it is unanimous that Ocean Cove was scrapped a long time ago that, you know, people saying Ocean Cove is coming, including maybe me over a year and a half ago, it's not. But again, I, I hesitate to double down on too many things when this is so far out, but people saying Ocean Cove, as far as I've been told, that is incorrect. It is Redwood Cove. And it was designed from the ground up to be node agnostic, and there are multiple, at least one source mentioning references to TSMC for at least components of it, whether that's an IO die or as a backup or PowerShell supplier. Now, I wouldn't bet on it because from what I hear, Intel really wants to keep their main CPU lineups on their nodes, but it, this one could be the first one to go to TSMC. And I've even heard that it might not have a ring bus, that this is the first, you know, kind of, I mean, when you really look at this, this is truly looks like the first next step processor from intel i know people might say alder lake is but you have to think about this alder lake adds little cores that's a big deal but it's still not as big of a difference i would argue as into as amd going through chiplets and then soon whatever they do with zen 4 you know so it's really redwood cove that is the big new giant leap to a new generation of processors and lunar lake yeah I can't say much except that there were some pretty firm mentions of an IO die, at least on this one. I cannot confirm Meteor Lake will have an IO die in its 3D stack, but it could be. Lunar Lake sounds like it definitely will be. All right. So I know that was a lot and good job to those who stuck through the whole thing. But, you know, it was a lot because, well, it was a lot that I would argue that's like four articles worth of leaks for some websites. So... Yeah, I decided to get all of that out now. I was going to do it at some point at the end of the year, but, you know, the best time to do it is when we see AMD finally take pretty much all performance crowns to put things in perspective. And now that things are in perspective, it should be clear what I meant, that it's going to be a long couple of years. You know, in 2021, there's basically zero chance Intel comes back at really anything, in my opinion. Alder Lake could retake the gaming crown, but it's, you know, they're thinking of marketing it as eight cores, 24 threads. And I mean, AMD's got a 16 core, 32 thread, all, you know, 16, all big cores already out now a year before Alder Lake. So it's not going to beat it at everything. And it really would be competing with Zen 4, which based on what I know, does some kind of 2.5D packaging, goes up to 24 to 32 cores with, Zen 2 at least level IPC increases. I guess you might say Zen 3 IPC increases are really more impressive than Zen 2. And so I don't really see Alder Lake beating Zen 4. It's just going to be lucky if it gets out first and takes the performance crown in gaming for a couple months. And then after that, it's, well, then Zen 4 will probably crush Sapphire Rapids. And so, yeah, you know, that's why I said AM domination in the title of this video till Redwood Cove. Not really because I'm sure Redwood Cove is going to win, just because I'm pretty sure Intel's not going to definitively be perceived as on the same level as AMD until pretty much 2023 at the earliest. So it's AM domination at least until 2023 as far as I'm concerned. That is a long time to go without being able to wear this Intel shirt with pride. And so... 
Yeah, I'm reminded of a video I did a very long time ago where I said, you know, you want AMD to be on top for not one year, not two, but a few years so that they can truly become a long-term competitor to Intel so that, you know, the market long-term is more healthy, has more healthy competition we can depend on. This isn't some blip of better pricing. And yeah, I'm not really worried about that anymore. I'm sure AMD is going to pretty much be on top for a while now. And so, well, I think Zen 3 isn't overpriced. I guess it's always relative to the competition. And yeah, I'm a little concerned about what they might charge for Zen 4. I really hope Alder Lake is out on time and, well, overperforms. But, well, we're getting ahead of ourselves for now. This is AMD's year, and it's the start of another year of their AM domination. And... Well, I guess there's one more thing to say, and that's a little bit about availability. As I confirmed on Twitter, I know there's over a million Zen 3 AM4 CPUs shipping right now. And I mean hundreds of thousands to all regions, not just America. So I know there's some people, you know, I really think the Ampere 3080 and 3090 launch has made people forget what paper launch even means. I was able to add several of the CPUs to my cart this morning like that's not a paper launch i wasn't trying that hard now i didn't end up ordering any of them because i haven't quite decided if i want to make a benchmarking rig yet but guys zen 3 was not a paper launch i just know that in europe it's taking longer to distribute those hundreds of thousands of cpus meant for that region to each country and to stores so hang tight they're gonna keep flowing in regularly and actually about ampere 3070 wasn't really a paper launch either. Probably gonna have to do another Ampere availability update because from what I'm being told from distributors, supply is higher now. 3070 wasn't really a paper launch. You know, just because something sells out doesn't mean it's a paper launch, but uh, it's still it's still definitely not going well on the supply side of NVIDIA. There's clearly something at least a little wrong, even if they are supplying much higher volumes of cards exactly when I said they would in the ultimate play. But I'm, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. That'll be another video at some point. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell button so you do not miss it. And if you enjoyed this video, please, please hit the like button, share it. And of course, consider supporting me on Patreon to get early ad-free access to Broken Silicon every week and the exclusive podcast, Die Shrink, and early access to other content as well. New Die Shrink comes out tomorrow, everybody. All right, thank you for watching.